everybody, Chris here. All right, you know, one of the most common questions I get from people about the terrain that I make is, uh, how do I do the shingles? And the short answer is there really is no easy, <laughs> there's no easy way to do it. It's just, it takes a lot of time. It's tedious. You put a movie on, you sit back, and you just cut these things out, and uh, you just go. And that's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs> Uh, those are two different buildings that I did with two different techniques that I'm going to demonstrate uh, here. Uh, one building is this sort of long sheets that I cut out, uh, kind of like long slices, thin slices. And then the second one, this one right here, are individual shingles that I cut out almost like it's a loaf of bread. I just take each slice as I go along and then individually paint each one. And that's it. So. You can do all of this with a box cutter here. I use the um, hot wire cutter because it saves a lot of time when you do it that way. But uh, with a, you can do it with a box cutter, you just have to go quick. All right, so here I'm just adjusting the box cutter a little bit, so I got it. Now I was trying to figure out a good angle to be able to show this so people can see what I'm doing. There really is no easy way to, to, to demonstrate this right up, but basically what I'm doing is I'm, I've got this long sort of rectangle cut out and then I just proceed to cut a series of wedges in there, little V's down the, uh, the top of that. Um, and you can, you, you do want to be careful and try to make sure each one, that, that it's the same amount of distance between each, each of the wedges. And the reason is, is because once you go a little farther and you start layering these things, then you will, uh, uh, if they're not all the same length, it's going to make things really difficult and you're going to have to do a lot of, you're going to be fighting it the whole time that you're uh, uh, putting these shingles on top of your building. So you want to try to do the same amount of distance each one. All right, so that's, that's it. I'm just trimming the edge off a little bit. And then on each side, I think I only do this on one side and I was trying to make sure that I had it in camera. I wasn't paying close attention to it, but um, you can see here. So you see where the wedges are cut out these in the V-shapes uh, throughout the whole thing. Normally you would want to, on either side, you want to make a V-shape so everything lines up together perfectly when you're doing that. So I've, I'm setting the fence here and this fence is going right up against the hot wire. So I get a very, th when I rip it along there, uh, it's just, it, I'm ripping just a very thin long piece out of this with the wedges that are already there. So I'm tightening it up and making my adjustments here. I go ahead and I'm also checking the wire because the problem with these the, the less you know less expensive ones is that the wire tends to jump a little bit around. And so what happens is is that you'll end up with it with a kind of a V shape. So I just took my exacto knife and just moved it a little bit, bent it down and moved the wire out a little bit to make sure that it just it's it's square when it lines up so I'm not you know cutting out when I cut out the thin pieces I'm not cutting out these angles that are there as you'll see all right so then I just take that and just rip start ripping pieces and you just put on some music put on a movie kick back relax and that's about it you just go through it you do have to go slow because otherwise that wire will uh, will flex and will bend and and you'll get really uneven uh, slices of shingles there. So it does take a little bit of practice. And then obviously you want to be careful not to burn yourself too. So you got to keep your fingers, try to keep your fingers as clear as possible of that. It ends up happening that you'll bump up against it every once in a while. But for the most part, you just keep your hands clear and you'll be fine. So there, so I've got two of them cut out here. And so I'm just checking them out and testing to see how they do when they layer them. If you've ever, you know, put tiles or watched somebody put tiles on a house, they don't, this is basically what they have there. And the, the three cuts in each tile that goes up on the, uh, uh, the shingles, three shingles on each tile that's there. And they just layer them as they go separate. Now I'm going ahead here and cut, as you can see, I'm cutting some lines into it. I have done it before where I've, in, in the, the, the thicker rectangle before I ripped the pieces, I've cut those lines into it, but one of the problems with it is that the hot wire tends to melt the foam as it goes and it just fuses the cuts together, together again. So it's just better to do it at the end. And you can even kind of cut a little bit more if you want, 
uh, out of a, a piece here and there and that will simulate sort of broken shingles or on a derelict old building that you got. So all right, so I'm lining it up so you can see offsetting it um, and you can see where I rushed a little bit and those shingles are not the, they're, some of them are wider than others and you notice um, as you go along you'll see here so I'm just uh, simulating it so I'm putting it on the side of the building as you go there you go and then you just layer it next to it a little hard to see but you just layer it next to it uh, you would use either hot glue to put it down or the white PVA glue is, is, is good because it allows you to slide around it doesn't, doesn't dry right away uh, so you can move it around, you can make adjustments as you go along. And uh, uh, I use regular white PVA, just Elmer's white PVA glue. You get the hardware store for inexpensive. It's, it's expensive in the craft stores. In the hardware stores, it's like Lowe's or Home Depot. It's cheap, so you can buy it there as that. And use that, uh, although a lot of people like Eileen's Tacky Glue, which is sold just in the hardware store, or in the craft stores like Michael's and Joann's. And... Um, uh, it's a little more expensive, but it's thicker and goopier, and it tends the stuff tends to stick a bit better. All right, so this is the second technique here, and this is where you're it's like almost like you're cutting a rounded loaf of bread, and you can do it with your uh, with an exacto knife or a, a your box cutter, uh, and you can slice them very thinly like that, and each individual shingle, and you just go one shingle after another after another, you just set them side by side, and the building that you can see there just to the uh, just to, just near where I'm working uh, is how I, that's the technique that I use for that building with individual shingles. Here I'm putting it on the uh, wire cutter, hot wire cutter, and uh, it goes pretty quick, but you just have to go slow and be careful because you're cutting it very thin and it'll melt the, uh, the foam. And when it melts the foam, it, they'll come out crooked. And uh, like the first couple that I did kind of got like that because I was, I was hurrying. And so I normally probably would have thrown those away and just kept going from there. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. You just just put on a show and just binge watch something on Netflix while you sit there and cut these things out. And I think there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around 250 of those individual shingles that are on that building right there in the uh, video next to my hand. Uh, and I just sat there and did it, and then I just glued them all individually. And so it's, it's pretty difficult. The good thing about doing individual shingles like that is that you can make each one unique. So you can cut, you know, if, if it's an old busted up building, you can, as many as you want, you can cut into them and uh, reshape them. You can hang them crooked. You can, I mean, you can glue them crooked. So almost like the shingle is sort of broken away, like off of one nail and is sitting there and is half hanging off the building. There's a lot of different things that you can do to play with, with uh, the individual shingles but it takes an infinite amount more time than, uh, than doing it the first way that I showed you where you cut the V wedges into it and you go along. And I actually prefer to do the V wedges. That's how I did the chapel. And I've done other buildings like that as well too, where I have those cut the, uh, the wedges first into it. And then, uh, um, and then I slice the things thinly after that. All right, and this is the last technique where you know, a lot of people do this that I've seen where they'll take uh, cardboard, so you're looking at a cereal box or a pizza box or, you know, the, the, the frozen pizza boxes. Uh, and um, they're just, you know, it's one, one thing of uh, um, plywood, uh, of, uh, sorry, of uh, cardboard. And so you can cut into a long strip and then you take the scissors or an X-Acto knife and you can trim each one uh, as you go along. And then you just glue them again using white glue or using Eileen's tacky glue. And here I'm taking a uh, X-Acto knife and I'm just cutting some some uh, um, wedges into it to simulate a broken shingle and roughen up the edge, the uh, the end of it as well with the X-Acto knife, kind of trying to uh, to fray it a little bit too, so as if it were old and weathered. One of the things that I don't like about these the the cardboard versus using the uh, foam is that if you're making um, like cedar shakes. Uh, wooden shingles, then um, here I, uh, you can see just a bit off camera I have a wire, well, a little wire brush that I use for this where I want, run this wire brush over the uh, over the foam and the uh, the grooves that go into there simulate a wood, the, uh, um, the grains in the wood and so when you paint it the grains actually show up really well all those scratches and marks and dents uh, really make it look like it's uh, it's wood 
so you don't have to sit there and trim balsa wood or something along those lines in order to do that. And I'm just taking the edge of the end of that to the wire brush and roughing up the ends again to fray them and to make them look a little more like the frayed old cedar shakes or something on this uh, on the building that you got. And of course you can take your exacto knife and cut off uh, parts of shingles again to have seemingly broken shingles that are there when you layer them then it'll look like you have missing shingles on there as they go along or parts are broken you can kind of cut them at an angle even just break them with your hand a little bit just to get a nice little cut mark and that's pretty much all there is to it it's just a long tedious job that you have to do and to make it look good unfortunately you just got to put up with it and just go through and just suffer through the whole thing so yeah that's it this is uh, some terrain that I built recently that's the chapel and so you can see the cedar shakes that are there uh, and uh, yep you can see the cedar shakes that are there and then I just kind of layered a very thin piece of foam on the ends to uh, um, you know on the ends for, for the whole thing but that's all there is to it so yeah all right well I hope you guys all give it a try and thanks for watching the video see you next time